Welcome to the next video in systems programming, discussing the textbook uh, Dive Into Systems. And here we're starting chapter two. And so this is gonna be just more conversation about C programming. And so we're gonna get into topics of like pointers, dynamic memory allocation. Uh, right here at the very start, we're talking about memory and scope. So uh, here's a C program. We include standard IO. Um, <clears throat> we declare some function prototypes that are gonna be defined down below. And then we declare a global variable. So you know, here we're getting introduced to the concept of a global variable. Um, it's, it's probably worth you know, looking at the definitions of these functions. So here's the max function. And it has a local variable val. And that variable gets uh, assigned according to the inputs. It's, you know, really, uh, you know, you could think about what this function is doing. But really, the, you know, the point of this example is just to see that, you know, max has its own variable val. But then change has the, you know, a variable also called val. And so the point of this, you know, I guess let's also notice that val gets uh, sort of manipulated uh, in, inside the scope of the change function as well as the max function. And so if we call the max function first uh, here, and then later we call the change function, sort of the question is, you know, are the two variables both called val the same variable, right? You know, so if we call max first and we do this to val, then by the time the program gets over to here is, you know, val already storing whatever value was given earlier? And the answer is no, right? So the point of this little uh, exercise or example is to realize that variables which are declared inside the scope of a function are not visible to things outside of that scope. So no, right, the, whatever the max function does to the variable val, it is not seen outside the scope of uh, the max function. Okay. But that is uh, deliberately different from how a global variable works. When it comes to a global variable, well, let's point here. Here, the global variable is getting uh, increased. So what was it? Does the global? Yeah, okay. The global variable gets initialized here in the main function, but then later on, based on this uh, change function, gets incremented by the amount. And because the function, or sorry, because the variable was declared globally, then therefore, you know, changes made here inside the main function appear outside the scope of the main function. So basically declaring the global variable to have the value 10 here is visible even uh, uh, you know, elsewhere in the program. And in particular uh, here, by the time uh, the change function increments the global variable by whatever the amount is, that global variable has the value 10 in it. And then whatever amount is given you know, here and is, is used to increment the global variable, the global variable will then have that value incremented if, you know, for instance, uh, you, you, or here, let's look, you know, uh, initially the global variable has value 10 because we call change with amount 10, then in, you know, the global variable is incremented by the amount 10. And so by the time we get down to here, where we print the value of the global variable there, it will be 20, right? Because the change that occurred inside of the call to the change function affected this global variable, its effect makes its way outside of the, uh, the, the context of the function. So anyway, so this is the idea of scope, right? So, the, so a variable that is declared inside of a function has scope only within that function, right? It, it essentially only exists so long as that function is being uh, executed. But if something is global, then it has a uh, scope it, it is in the scope of everything that happens in the entire program. So local variables like uh, right, local variables would be ones like uh, this val, that's a local variable. And parameters, those are the uh, you know, variables that are uh, inputs to the function, right? Those are only in scope inside the function in which they are defined. 
Uh, the book gives this recommendation to avoid using global variables whenever possible, uh, ju just as a matter of uh, nicely organized code, tracking global variables can be fairly confusing. Um, so that makes sense to me. So here we're going to get introduced to the concept of the address space or memory space uh, for a given program. It is controlled by the operating system. Uh, the operating system uh, you know, essentially stores the code that you uh, write and, um, and will be in, you know, effectively in charge of, of running it. Um, so the, I guess the next thing that it stores is the global variables. And then there is the heap, which we will see a lot more of soon, and the stack, which is at the far end, with some empty space in between, which gets filled up and sometimes uh, gets cleared out, uh, but it basically you know, dynamically resizes uh, as the program runs and as it has to you know, uh, fill uh, and sometimes free memory. I guess I should point out that the stack is the same, right, it's the execution stack. It's the same as the stack in the stack diagrams that we saw in previous videos. And we will talk more and more about dynamically allocated memory as we go through chapter two, but the you know anything that is dynamically allocated is stored in the heap. So what that means, I guess, will only become clear as we discuss what is dynamic memory allocation, and that is to come.